Hey guys, my name is Jordan Kanigi with 168 Fishing Adventures. Today we're out here on the river fishing, bobber fishing for spring chinook. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit on how to set up and how to prepare for these fish. So here we go. So we're going to start with the rod, okay? We want a pretty heavy rod and we're going to be bobber fishing so we want a pretty long rod. Today we have the Okuma SST 10.6, 10 to 50 pound rod, okay? And we need that kind of weight to fight these fish and keep them in these big deep springer holes that we're fishing them in. So the kind of line you're going to want to fish with for these spring chinook is uh, I like to use braid, and I like to use a floating braid because we're bobber fishing. But I like to tie a bumper. So I go, I have a 40 pound P-line, Teflon coated braided, high visibility. And from there, I tie about a 25 to a 30 foot bumper of, of 25 pound test or 20 pound P-line fluorocarbon. And that's what I let my bobber run up and down. And I find it sinks better than your, than, than your braided line, and it also has less resistance. So what we go from there, we go down to the bobber stop. And you can use either your, your classic thread bobber stop, I used, like to use the little red uh, Bow Mac bobber stop. So below that bobber stop, we're gonna have your beads. You can use a corky, you can use anything. I like to use two different beads, one being fairly big so that you can see it from a distance to make sure that you're fishing. And I slide those up the line right to the bobber stop. You're gonna need a bigger bobber to fish for these fish. What I like to use is at least two to three ounces, depending on which kind of river you're fishing. Uh, you know, where we're gonna be at today is gonna to be a lot deeper. We're gonna be fi fishing big, deep salmon holes. So we want at least a two ounce bobber to get down to them. Some people like to put a bobber stop below their bobber so that they don't lose their bobbers if they ever break off, which is a smart idea because these aren't cheap. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that today. We're gonna to go just straight to the swivel. We got about a size two swivel here. I like to use a bigger swivel so that it's a little bit stronger. If you're gonna get snagged with a three ounce weight, you need something strong enough to really yank it out. Um, I like to use these kind of clevises so that if you do get snagged, it'll open this clevis and lose just your weight, not all your whole setup. So we're gonna go with this into the eye end with the clevis. We're gonna do just a normal fisherman's knot for this one. So I like to go a, a two and a half to about a three foot leader to about a four aught hook or a five aught, depending on what kind of bait you're gonna be fishing. If you're gonna be fishing sand shrimp or any kind of, any kind of presentation with your eggs, you're gonna to wanna to use a bigger hook because those fish aren't gonna be able to find that hook. Um, with that leader, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna do another normal fisherman's knot right to the other end of the swivel. This is your normal Chinook salmon setup right here. We got bobber stop to the beads, beads to the bobber, bobber to the swivel, three foot leader on down to the hook. And you can put a corky, a lot of people like to run just straight eggs, uh, but other than that, you know, straight eggs or a little corky up above it works really good, just kind of catch those fish's attention. Today we're using a little coon shrimp and prawns with our eggs, but we're gonna take these eggs, cured with grow cure, these have a lot of tuna, powdered tuna, some of the addicted salmon blend in them. I'm gonna cut that nice, healthy chunk out, and I'm gonna take this egg loop, and I'm gonna stick it up in the air there, and I'm gonna keep this nice, big belly in it, just like that, and I like to hold it with my finger. I'm gonna grab that hook, turn those eggs over, go through them at least twice, bring them back down to the base of your hook. You're gonna take this egg loop now, which is very important, and you're gonna wrap it right around your eggs. Okay. And it's good to try to, even if it takes you a couple tries and gets your hands messy, you want to go ahead and make sure you get those eggs grabbed nice and tight and you pull them right onto the bar of your hook, just like that. And now you're fishing. Man, those are some tasty looking eggs in that video, weren't they? Yeah, they liked them that day. They sure did. Well, hopefully you guys and girls out there were able to learn some things about tributary springer fishing when it comes to eggs. And we have a third video coming up in this series. Like I said, there's four videos, so if you didn't catch the first one, make sure you guys go back and hit the first one. It was locating tributary springers. This video is bobber and eggs. The next one in the series, what is it? We're talking spinners. And that is your... Probably like how I met you. I mean, I yeah. remember the first time I ever fished, not how I met you, but the first time I ever fished with you, you pretty much tossed spinners the entire freaking day. And I remember you hooked two fish in water that I was like, why is he fishing that? Somebody had to clean it up. Why is he fishing that? So I'm excited that we got to talk to Jordan about fishing spinners and the tributaries. He knows a lot about it. I've learned a ton about him from fishing them. So guys, tune into the next video. We're launching it tomorrow. Springer fishing with spinners. We'll see you on the water.